How's it going guys? My name is Eric Van, my face hurts. And welcome back to Corpse Party Blood Drive! We're gonna be doing EX Chapter 5, Threading the Needle, and let's hope it's gonna be better than EX Chapter 4. I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's... I'm hoping it's just more shorter to the point and it's interesting stuff. I don't like the slice of life stuff. In the depths of the Martuba's Tomb HQ, man, my face really hurts talking. Because <laughs> I got my wisdom teeth pulled out and that's why I've been making videos. In case you guys didn't know. So I'm going to sound a bit weird. I'm going to look a bit weird. But whatever. Because I took a lot of the, the stuff to help me sleep last night. Drugs. And I woke up and I was like, ah! And I kind of feel a little woozy, but that's okay. In the storage room stacked high with books to rival any libraries, I was hard at work researching my mark, squatting on the ground to read the books I'd spread out before me. Yeah, I know. You know, when I think library and I think librarian people inside a library, Mogadi is the first thing that comes to mind and her sexy clothes. That's what I think. A person reading books should look like that. Yep. Well, then again, it does kind of look like maybe she just took a book to the beach or something. Yeah, she's, she's ready. She's in her beachwear already. Achoo! What? What? I hit the shelf behind me with my back when I sneezed, and after a couple seconds of passed, a fairly heavy book fell from above, landing right on my spine. Well, damn! You sneezed pretty damn heavily! Holy shit, if it flew you back that hard! You gotta, you gotta not sneeze as hard! Control your sneezes! I thought you were like a powerful human being! <laughs> And put this shit away right next time, or maybe just don't let your sneezes, like, fly you back a meter and, like, knock into the shelf. I observed the fallen tome which had serendipitously, a uh, game, my mouth hurts, stop it with the big words, serendipitously, seriously. Open to a photo that looked an awful lot like the very book I was seeking. Before I could read the associated passages, however, a member of the order appeared and gave me a stiff salute. <laughs> Okay, so they've completed the analysis of the Ever After Stones. 83% accuracy of the originals. So the ones that they made or whatever. Oh wow, that's ballsy. Wow, shit, really? Is that extra chapter's already over? Well, that was, uh, that was too short to the point. I was getting into that. I wanted to know a little bit more about the Ever After Stones. That was too short. Okay, let's go to chapter six. Okay, EX chapter six, separation. That sounds like a bundle of laughs. God, I'm looking at myself in the camera and I look really, like, haggard from all these painkillers I've been taking and stuff. Okay, anyways. I remember I was leaning against a wall in a small basement room with indirect lighting. And Hinoe was sitting in a chair across the room from me holding a coffee mug. Okay, so this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be about uh, Hinoe and Misato because we knew they had a relationship of sorts. We didn't know exactly what, though. It was just hinted at. This is neat. This is, these are cool extra chapters. The filling in the gaps of the stuff we didn't know about. I'm happy. A beautiful silver bracelet on her left wrist caught the light, sparkling majestically. Okay, damn. So Hinoe... There's something about test results in Hinoe getting tested, so obviously... She probably got, like, sexually assaulted, right? Well, now we know why Misato went psycho. He know I got sexually assaulted and they were like an item, I guess. He know his tone of voice was calm and soothing. She was trying to bring me back from the rage that had consumed me. Okay, 
Oh, hell yeah, Hinoe. Let's get condescending on him. <laughs> I thought for that too. And then I grew up. Something that maybe you should try one day, Misato. <laughs> Good. I like that condescending tone. Oh, my mouth hurts so bad. あなたの物語はお話みたいにここで終わったりしないんだから。うせえな。俺のこの人は長年積み上げてきた結果だ。あなたは。You know, I closed her eyes and smiled. She then drew her knees into her chest and wrapped her arms around them, contemplating something. Oh, shit! No, she doesn't want to be with someone hateful and spiteful, Misato! You know, he buried her head in her hands and began to cry. Oh, she's not good at breakups. A difference in philosophies. One wanted to destroy the world, and one didn't. Irreconcilable differences! Yeah, you wanted to go to the purge. Yeah, you, you failed her, okay? You failed her. Yeah, you're a piece of shit, Misato. You are. Seriously. Don't you know that chicks don't like guys who want to bring about the apocalypse? Okay? It just doesn't work. It's not a good pickup line. I've tried it. Say, hey, I want to end the world and kill everyone because they suck and want to bring about the apocalypse. And she just left. I don't know what it was. My headless corpse now lay in Heavenly Host Nirvana. A silver bracelet dimly glinting upon its wrist, which was Hinoe. So I imagine Misato went and found Hinoe's, like, dead body. After she died at the the manor or whatever out in the woods. The Shinozaki estate. Um, with... At the end of Book of Shadows. God, my mouth. So yeah, he, pa he dies with that. That's too bad. Tragic fate, huh? X chapter 6 separation! Now we're gonna go on to EX chapter 7. Oh, I love these EX chapters! They're short, to the point, they're impactful. I really like it. That was really neat. It was it was fill it's filling in the gaps of the game that we really wanted to know about, right? It's perfect. EX chapter 7, here we come. Okay, EX chapter 7, Satsuki's heart. Oh, we're gonna learn about Satsuki. That's nice. Because we just think she was a crazy monster, but we don't know how did she become a monster? Was she originally a monster? Oh, that's a bad sign. Yeah, your parents being kind? I, I don't believe it. There was a big red screen! It means blood, guts! It was dusk and the room was completely unlit. It was so dark inside that we could have been entertaining guests and I'd never have known it. Because I'd never have been able to see them. Okay, dark room. I felt alone, but knew I wasn't. And I was determined to get my mom's attention. Uh, Satsuki, I don't think your parents <laughs> loved you. <laughs> Assuming she hadn't moved since the sun had started setting, my mom was probably still sitting at our small kitchen table, leaning her elbows on it and cradling her forehead, like a crazy person. This was the third time I'd informed her of my desire to eat, and finally this time I could hear her start to move at the sound of my voice. Though this was my home, it had always just felt like an empty void to me. And now it was more than just a feeling, I noticed my voice was echoing a lot more than it ever used to. All of our furniture was mysteriously disappearing day in and day out. Well, they're selling it! They can't afford shit! They're drug addicts? I don't know! Yesterday was the toaster, the day before was the piano, the day before that was our chest of drawers. And today was Dad? Where had Dad gone, I wondered? Mom's shadow moved slightly silhouetted in a shade of black, only slightly different from the rest of the blackness around me. She extended her arm in my direction. Are you, are you really sorry? Her tone like the house itself was dark. 
Maybe it just sounded that way because of the general mood in the room. Hopefully that's all it was, I thought. No electricity either. They're poor, is what it is. What? What? Suddenly my field of vision shook violently and my surroundings began flitting by like shooting stars. Flashes of light were whizzing to and fro as the barely discernible ceiling pattern above me was phasing in and out of existence. Did you just get slapped with the frying pan? The legs of the table was sitting... I was sitting at began to melt away. I saw mom's face for a moment. And then there was this strange march of frying pans flying through the air. It was especially strange since we only owned one frying pan. My entire face began to swell and go into convulsions. My ears were howling and ringing. I could barely hear anything anymore. The areas under my nose and ears were all wet and cold as well. Was that snot? Earwax? Was it blood? It's blood and pus and gross shit's coming out of your face! Your poor mom is a crazy bitch! Whoa! Did you feel the what? You're not you why you don't stop beating her with the fry pan See whenever this happened mom would always hang back and rest her head for a bit But would then hug me with the kindest warmest most sickeningly sweet embrace. That's why I love them. I love frying pans I love what they represent to me oh, That's dark holy shit What just beating her is all you have mom gave me some potato chips. Oh, just, good. Thanks. The beating was worth it for some potato chips. They weren't exactly my favorite brand, so their flavor was kind of iffy, but it's the thought that counts, right? There were cartons and cartons of potato chip bags all throughout our house, and they were all for me. I was the only one who really ate them. Whenever I did, Mom would always seem to be a little happier for some reason. So frying pans were my favorite objects, and potato chips were my favorite food. <gasps> oh, is this where she's gonna get changed to a monster? Oh, reborn, yeah. So that's what they're calling it these days. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yay, time to start class. I'm gonna be reborn, so I'm happy. I don't want... Oh, Satsuki, and that's cute. This was Hadue Mizuhara. I'd known her since grade school. I still wasn't sure how to react when someone called out to me, though, so I just stared at her blankly. Oh, how much you love those plants. Oh, I see. Good call. Yeah, you're gonna get changed into a monster. <laughs> Mizuhara was genuinely really funny. She had a certain sense of timing about her that made it hard for me not to get sucked in. I didn't usually laugh as a rule, but this girl could really bring it out of me. <laughs> well, she does have a good pair, but I can't say that because she's in middle school! Cops, don't come to my house, house, please. Later that day, Mizuha had gotten into a car accident. What? Later that day, Mizuha had gotten into a car accident on her way home from school. Her jaw shattered on impact, preventing her from ever smiling again. Holy shit! Just a little offhanded comment about her, like, breaking her jaw. Like, that's so dark! Since then, she hadn't come to school a single time. Okay, then! Ow, my tooth hurts so bad. I was brought to this suspicious place through some magic that obviously leaned a bit on the dark side. Yeah, take a look around at those candle bras and like everything around you. It's, it's... I would take one look at this place and be like, yeah, it's black magic. I'm out of here. This place looks insane. I remember I was really cold here since I was wearing nothing but a thin black robe. 
<laughs> oh, that's why you want her. This was the headquarters of Martuba's tomb. I was in a room lined with terrifying looking devices and everyone around me was dressed in similar robes, listening intently, almost passionately, to their leader's voice. My mind was a blank slate, I had a slight smile on my face, but I didn't want to make eye contact, so I just focused all my attention at a random piece of floor. I do that sometimes. I gave an empty smile and turned my gaze lazily toward the corner of the ceremony room. What I saw there gave me a sudden chill, though I did my best not to show it. Sticking out from a massive earthenware pot was Hadoui's face, thoroughly bloodied and with eyes rolled back into her skull. Oh, wow, wow! Streams of drool and blood alike had stained her lifeless chin. She appeared very much as if she had literally just been thrown away like yesterday's garbage. Jeez, so they knew that she was trying to get Satsuki away from this, so they killed her? That's... or something? Oh my god. The room fell silent, no doubt anxiously awaiting for my response. I've been trying my hardest to swallow my emotions, but there are just some feelings a person can't suppress, and one of them made its way up from my heart and out of my mouth. It was accompanied by a sudden flurry of tears, and my parents immediately began to show signs of extreme panic on their faces. They looked at me as if I just committed the greatest affront known to man. They were afraid, but also disgusted. Their stares were cold and accusatory. Of course they are, because they wanted to give you so they'd get higher up in this crazy cult of Martuba. <laughs> this simple affirmation statement was followed by one quick flick of the wrist, and suddenly my parents were now missing the upper halves of their bodies. Oh yeah, baby! Oh heck yeah, that's what you get for trying to use Satsuki! You get cut in half. <laughs> nice, I like your screams. It required almost no effort, my parents each now lay in two pieces, making a squishy, slimy, awful sound as they died. <laughs> Yes. Yay, Amagadi's pet, that's great. Yay! Make sure they don't throw frying pans at me. Spiritual surgery. Turn me into a plant monster. I am Satsuki Mizuhara, and I've just been born on this day. The end! Satsuki's heart. Okay, well, that, that was really cool. That was cool. I love these extra chapters. They're awesome. Okay, we're going on to AS chapter 8. Okay, chapter 8, reignition. Vroom, vroom, reignite. Vroom, 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 vroom. I'm so funny. God, oh, my mouth hurts. I feel, I, 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 I'm very self-conscious about it. I sound like I'm very weird, and I think my jokes really suck today, but whatever. Okay, this is, um, this looks like it's going to be an epilogue. Because after Ayumi Shinozaki sealed away the Nirvana. Yeah, the Earth will never be the same. No, everyone knows about the supernatural. Okay, so the replacements are all gone. So Kuan Niwa, they're gone. They've been erased, so no one remembers them. But I guess Satoshi would remember her because he was there during the Heavenly Host incident. Okay. Huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. You feel so important. I know. 
And we and we alone have moved this world. Ah, oh, shut up! You're full of yourself. I doubt it. Black magic pieces of shit. What? What? Okay. Okay. Wow. An immaculate child just came out. Okay. Yay, immaculate child. New leader. Once the cleanup efforts... I wonder if that'll lead into Corpse Party 2 dead patient at all. I don't know. Once the cleanup efforts from the Nirvana incident had more or less become old news, I decided to pay the order a visit and see what was up. Well, Magari, a lot of them died in Nirvana, you know? And outside of Nirvana too, some of them probably died. Wow. I am the founder of this Martuba HQ, and I died by falling down the stairs. Good job, buddy. You'll be forever remembered as that guy. Like, <laughs> the really awkward guy's like, oh god, there's a crisis! Ah! And just died, okay? You'll be forever remembered as that dude. Good job. I turned around and walked out of the room. Springs creaked and groaned as I tossed about in my bed. I got up and jumped right back down onto the mattress once more. I wanted to break the fucking thing! All the shit I did. Oh, she's getting existentialist now. Hey, whatever. You, you joined this knowing that... Okay, whatever. Slammed the bed repeatedly with my fists and the springs rock back and forth vigorously. Like, she joined the Martuba organization knowing the kind of shit that they did. And you should have known it wasn't going to be, like, perfect, you know? <laughs> My eyes were red and I was out of breath as I threw my tantrum. A familiar figure stepped in through my bedroom door, carrying a tray. Hey, Waldo! I got up and threw myself at Waldo with every last for every last bit of force my muscles could push. Instantly, I was bawling. Stop it! Waldo was old and wise, he was my rock in all this. Hi. He smiled at me. Okay, so you want to rebuild it and you want to become a leader. Great. You'll be the head of it. You'll make a good leader. You should have a new, um, clothing. Should have new clothing regulation, new dress code. I'm, I just can't talk right now. My mind is still all fuzzy from like the drugs and stuff. You should have a new dress code, okay? And Magadi, the clothes you're wearing, that's the new dress code for the men too. Okay, just make them wear speedos and run around. People will take you guys seriously, I think. I have a good feeling people will take you guys seriously. You should do that. 
Okay, so that's the end. That's ch it's chapter 8, and that's the last one. That's the last one. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. It was a lot of fun to do. These EX chapters, 5, 6, 7, and 8, were really interesting. They filled in a lot of gaps. The little epilogue thing was really neat. And it was, it was just awesome. Much better than EX chapter 3 and 4. I found those really boring. I don't like slice of life stuff in a game like this. Um, unless it has like a, a big meaning, right? But the, those slice of life chapters didn't have much of a meaning. It was kind of, it was decent seeing Magadi and Naho meet for a little bit. But, you know, it was too like campy and it wasn't really fun. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm not going to be doing an endings guide, I don't think. Reason being is it would take me a lot of time, and there's not much payoff because the extra endings, the wrong endings in this game aren't very good. It's like, oh, and then you got caught and you died, wrong ending. But there's a couple that apparently are kind of interesting um, that are in the last chapter. There's some wrong endings like when you're fighting the final boss that are kind of neat. But, um, I don't know. It's it's a lot of effort, and it'll really disrupt my uploading schedule, and I'm really busy getting my stuff ready to move back to Korea in January. So maybe, like, come January 3rd or 4th when I move, and I have some more time, I might do it, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a lot of work for such little payoff, like I said. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Leave a like. It helps me out immensely. God, my mouth really hurts, so I'm really sorry if I sounded weird or, like, and my head was in a funny place because I'm taking painkillers. So, I was probably made, like, some really lame jokes, but whatever! Hope you guys enjoyed anyways. I'll see you in future videos on the channel, and as always, guys, peace.